Hello there, um, I'm Timothy Lund. And hello there, I'm Rebecca. And uh, here we are with a very special edition of Anime in the UK. And unfortunately a bit of a sombre edition where I am very sadly having to bring you the news that uh, our dear friend of the anime community or UK anime community, Akemi Takanana, has sadly passed away. Um, I believe Rebecca uh, has a statement that was released on her Facebook page. Um, would you like to share that with us, Rebecca? Yes. It is with great sadness that we announce, must announce after, after developing cancer, Akemi Tanaka passed away recently. Akemi had been ill for some time, but had made a conscious decision to continue working to promote those ideals that she held close to her heart. This includes the charity that she founded, Aid for Japan. Akemi's passionate work for the orphans on the 20, 000, 2011 Japanese earthquake and tsunami covered 10 years of fundraising, events and personal support for children whose lives were changed by the charity's efforts. Akemi's passing impacts not just the charity but all the other lives she touched through teaching, lecturing and organising across a long career focused on photo Japanese culture. Equally, her support of Shoi Ito which meant challenging the problems of sexual violence in Japan was also a strong cause that Akemi spent the last few years championing. Her recent book, The Power of Chowa, reached a new audience to Akemi's wisdom, once again expanding her advocacy for Japanese culture, where she explored the Japanese concept of Chowa, which means the search for balance. The success of the book could be a testimony to Akemi's passion and made her absence all the more sad. However, the book of the solace in its words. In one chapter, Akemi approaches the issues of life and death. When we lose people closest to us, it is perfectly natural for us to feel as if we have fallen down and to feel as if there is nothing we could do to get back up. But Choa reminds us that people come together in times of sadness. It teaches us that it's the people left alive that matter the most and we must help each other back on our feet. Thank you. Over to you. Oh, thank you very much, Rebecca. That was very, that was actually very touching, very beautifully read there. Um, mm. uh, lo lots of absolutely wonderful words. Uh, one mm. of the ones that actually did uh, stand out to me was Akemi's wisdom. And I think that that was one word I could uh, put with Akemi. I think that definitely was. She definitely, she definitely seemed like a wise sage. Um, she was always so knowledgeable. She, and the way she would always deliver deliver her speeches of course she um akemi was a weird one because she actually i think she i've worked with practically every anime convention in the country i, I off the top of my head i don't think i can think of a anime convention she don't, didn't work with and that's actually quite rare because there's normally always that one that's just a little bit too far up north to get to or if you're up north a little there's that one that's a little bit too down south to get to so yeah she'd always um she was always um doing speeches talks at the conventions of course um she, as an anime convention, she'd do um lots of talks on uh um on uh, J japanese culture um and i i do remember a story uh once when she uh i was going to orbital mangas and uh orbital mangas was a manga shop so unfortunately not there anymore and i was there with my dear friend Errold and nadine who sadly also passed away from cancer a few years ago um and i remember kemi was at the front and she was doing a lecture about uh japanese culture and um i mean i've been in that orbitals a few times and they been like people talking about comics and stuff like doing speeches about comics and normally you sort of went to the back and you just sort of looked at the manga and sort of left but i remember akemi just just being so interesting that the three of us came to the front to come and watch what watch her and i mean i think it was like some of the more basic stuff about japan but it was just really interesting and at the end i think for a pound she would uh she would actually write your name in kanji which i think i believe i may still actually have somewhere um somewhere in my possession um so yeah um that was like one of the times i do remember of kemi do you have any uh good memories of kemi rebecca whenever kemi went i guess at a convention mm -hmm. 
she always tried to be like part of a convention. Yes. And that even included stuff like the opening and closing ceremonies yeah. and like any ceremonies. Mm -hmm. But also she would join in. Mm -hmm. And often the best guests at anime convention will join in with the fabric of the convention. Yes. I remember at a past Minami con that she actually came to karaoke and sung. She sung Neon Genesis Evangelion opening and she sang it very well. And like, it's nice to see the guests actually join in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what a nice person. Yes, she definitely was a really lovely person. I always, um, I remember chatting to her a few times. She always, normally when she had a new event happening, she was always making sure that I knew about it, especially when it was in the London area. <laughs> because I think she knew I was one of these keen people who like to, um, she used, there used to be a really lovely event she used to help run called Japan Arts Festival. Did you ever go to that one, Rebecca? Or was that a bit before No, was that, was that, that's a, that was a little bit before my time. Was that Bankakai? It was like in Richmond. I think the Bankakai was a bit after. I think that was the one that, I think that's kind of when they tried to relaunch it in London. And unfortunately, mm. um, I think the venue they picked just, unfortunately, was not the best venue in the world. And, um, Unfortunately, I just don't think enough people really showed up. But mm. when it was in Richmond, oh, it was such a lovely event. Um, this was... Uh, Did it fold into, like, Japan Matsui, which is usually held in Trafalgar Square in London? Yes, it, it felt like almost... Yeah, it felt a bit like a, a, pre, a predecessor to something like that. Um, I mean, there was, like, a cosplay contest, a... Um, a lot more i think you're mostly based on japan but there normally was all all, all the your sort of anime stores would be there and i think it, it, most of the time it ran sort of february so it was always that first convention of the of mm. you know out um i think this is a good couple of years for uh, london anime and gaming con was a thing so this was always kind of the almost the start what about of the midlands I, I think even the midlands i think it actually used to run before i mean i think the midlands was on but i think that would run a week or two before even the midlands so it was always the start of the sea well, as you'd say the start of the con season and i said mm. unfortunately they did stop stop running it after a few years whether i think it may have been maybe more the venue couldn't run it whether there was a reason they couldn't run it or maybe they wanted uh, just a bit more but it was such a lovely event um just loads of japanese culture and i said the kemi was was always there helping out with that one and actually uh, i think they were because um wasn't it the they were doing a 10th anniversary or i uh for aid for japan of course that's a charity a kemi um has worked with or has no not worked she created sorry that's that's um and um mm. the week after miyani con um there was a supposed to be a event for it, a fundraising event, mm -hmm. and I'd actually, um, I was helping out a friend, and I was actually, um, what's it? I was actually going to be going. Uh, I think they would wanted to do a cosplay show, and I was going to be showing up in my Pikachu costume, my big giant Pikachu costume. Uh, just wanted to just to help out, uh, just help out the gang, and um, yeah, no, um, literally a day before it was due to happen. Um, I got sent an email saying, unfortunately, due to the um, this coronavirus, it um, it has um, they have decided not to go ahead with the convention. So that's just very sad that I was due to actually see her again just before before this all happened. And it, um, yeah, um, just really really sucks that um, I never got to see her that one last time. I guess I always live with that sadness. I know Kemi probably isn't going to want me to feel really sad about that but i mean i really really just like to have seen her one last time uh heard that wisdom her just heard that wonderful voice uh, i know i talked a bit in the last episode a bit about asmr and i, I feel i'm a, real, a true believer that the best asmr are just the people who are just really passionate about what they talk and just have one of those wonderful voices and kemi definitely was one of them i could honest god just sit there for, for ages just listening to what a kemi you know her wisdom was so amazing. Just the story she'd tell was so amazing. Um, it just shows you w what a wonderful woman she was. And we were just so lucky to have her. Um, and definitely, um, I think she was definitely one of the 
the be some of the best events I've probably ever seen at anime conventions um, definitely have been run by her and I said uh, talking a part of the community of the UK anime scene she's definitely truly going to be missed and yeah I'm just really sad I never guess got to say goodbye if she was alive today yes she probably would have guessed on this podcast. Yeah, we would have loved to. Honest to God, I, I had drawn up a list. And Akemi definitely was someone very top. I would admit top five. No, top three. I think Akemi definitely was the top three. And I'm just so sad that she she never got to be. We never, we never got to have her. I'm sure she would have had some amazing wisdom to share with us. Mm. But um, it, it's time we should remember her. Um do we have a link to her charity? I presume that will be carrying on the Age, Age, yeah. Age Japan. I'm sure we'll have that in our, our, our link in the thingy section below us mm. or above us or whatever YouTube decides to put it. And, um, also, also, like, her daughter is getting involved in the charity. Recently, mm -hmm. she posted something a few months ago about 10 years since the great Tohoku earthquake and tsunami yes, yes. and there's if you make a fa like there's this japanese tradition if you make a thousand track cranes mm -hmm. out of origami mm -hmm. it's meant to be a good luck omen because the crane in japan is like a lucky charm like we yeah. would have like horseshoes mm -hmm. over here yes um I've I've actually heard that I heard that story. Actually, it probably was Kemi who actually told me that story. <laughs> That's the thing. That's exactly the sort of thing she would say. And also, she has she has a book available on all good book selling platforms. Um, I'm Power of Choa. Excellent, and I will have a link to that. Is there an Amazon link to that? Because I know that's what's the. There is an Amazon the... link. Is there an ebook as well? I'm just double checking. I know some. Yes, are... there's. It's available on Kindle. Excellent. That's even better because I do know there is some people now who will only read it if it's an ebook. So that's even better. Right. I think um, that will be our our thing for today. As I said, we will always miss a Kemi. Um, I just really wish she was here because she'd have say something absolutely wise and amazing and it said I'm just we're just gonna miss the heck out of you okay me um mm. you, you meant so much to us uh I just really wish we said it a lot more we said more <laughs> when you're live but I I know you're probably wherever you are now you probably know how much we all miss you uh, a lot a lot of us are gonna miss you I mean everyone's gonna miss you mm. Right, and um, it's saying, um, hopefully we'll see you all again on the next Anime in the UK podcast. Um, until then, um, stay golden. Bye. Bye.